Hey guys, if you've been following the channel for any time at all now, you'll know that we've done some fun stuff like installing Kali Linux or Ubuntu Linux on a Chromebook recently. So to kind of stick with that theme, we're going to do something very similar to that today. Um, but in this video, we're going to install a different operating system, one you may have not even heard of, called Gallium OS. If you're not familiar with Gallium OS, it's built on top of um, Xubuntu or Zubuntu, however you want to pronounce that. Um, but it's built specifically with Chrome OS devices in mind. So the things that maybe didn't work, like maybe your media buttons or your trackpad or, or those types of things that didn't work if you try to install Ubuntu, um, they're more likely to work in, in Gallium OS than they would be in, in Ubuntu or Kali or, or Mint or any of those others, because this, again, is built for Chrome OS devices. Obviously, the first thing that we're going to need to do is actually download Gallium OS. We can do that by going to galliumos.org. I will have a link to that in the description down below uh, where you can go over and, and download from there. Uh, they've got options to download from their servers or from uh, torrents as well. Uh, now, the one thing that you will need to take into consideration when you're downloading this is uh, you'll need to figure out which uh, processor your Chromebook has. So if we go over to their website, uh, to their download page more specifically, uh, here we can see that there are uh, several different options uh, to download. And uh, we'll, we'll basically, we're going to want to look at the architecture uh, on which your processor is built. Now, for instance, uh, my C720 from Acer has a Haswell processor in it. So that's the one that I downloaded. So you may have a different processor architecture in your Chromebook, depending on uh, the, the make and model and even the year uh, that your Chromebook was built. So, um, so definitely make sure that you do some research on your Chromebook or your Chrome OS device to make sure you know exactly which processor it's got. Uh, that way you can make sure that you download the correct uh, image file to, um, to create a USB stick out of later. So if you're not familiar with how to actually create a bootable USB stick, uh, I just created and released a video on how to do that. Um, I'll, I'll put a link to it in the description down below, as well as a card up here if I remember to do that. Um, but that way you can, you can get started, not have any issues when you're trying to install this on your Chrome OS device. Okay, I think that's enough intro here. So let's go ahead and switch angles. We'll take a look at how to um, uh, unlock the BIOS to make the, the Chromebook that I've got uh, capable of booting from a USB device. Uh, we'll go through the installation process of installing Gallium OS uh, and show you that it's working. And uh, then we'll go from there. Okay, so here we are on the desktop of the Chromebook. And the first thing we need to do here is actually put it in developer mode. And the way we do that is by pressing and holding escape and uh, refresh, we're gonna press and hold those while we tap the power button. I wanna make sure that we keep holding these buttons. Okay, so if you get this screen, the first thing you wanna do here is press Control D. It's gonna to say to turn verification off, press Enter. We wanna turn OS verification off to put it in developer mode. So we'll press Enter. And then here it's gonna give us a screen saying OS verification is off. Uh, press space to re-enable. This is kind of a, just an additional step to make sure that you wanna do this. And then I believe we'll have one more of these or something similar to this on the next screen. Okay, so now it's uh, in transition mode. Um, it's, it says up here at the top left, we'll start in 30 seconds. Again, this is another one of those Hey, just in case you didn't mean to do this, now's your chance to back out. Uh, and, and to do that, you just power your computer off. We're not gonna do that, we're gonna let this go. Um, and here in a few seconds, um, this text up at the top where it says starting in 30 seconds will change to an actual progress bar. Uh, we'll see the percentage, the time that it's been doing its thing, as well as over here, uh, how much time is left. And here is that progress bar, uh, like I stated before. Okay, so now that we've uh, we've put the de the device in developer mode, uh, we're presented with this screen saying OS verification is off. Um, and if we want to, we can uh, re-enable that. We don't want to do that. We actually want to go ahead and boot into uh, our desktop. So we can press Control D. Okay. 
Okay, so here we've got a couple of options. Um, we can go through the setup. Well, we'll have to go through a bit of the setup process here to get started, though. So we'll go ahead and press Let's Go. And then it's going to ask us to connect to a, uh, a wireless uh, network. So we'll go ahead and do that. Um, now we're just going to accept and continue. This is all fine. And this is where one of those variations comes in. Um, you can sign in, but I don't think that's necessary. Uh, what we'll do is actually browse as guest. And now we're logged in as a guest. Now the next thing we have to do is start the, sh the um, basically a command prompt and open shell. So we'll press Control Alt T. That's going to bring up Crosh, uh, which is the Chrome shell or the basically the Chrome terminal. Uh, we want to actually start shell and press enter. So now we're here. And uh, the next thing that we need to do is actually um, modify the BIOS a little bit. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to type in a command here. And all of this will be in the description down below. Um, and then bash. And then we'll say curl. And this is to download a file. TPS. Uh, John Lewis dot IE slash flash CB uh, FW dot SH and then we'll press enter. So now it's going to download a file um, and it's saying, hey, um, by doing this, you take on all of your own risks. Um, so we're going to head and press enter here. Now, here we actually want to use option one. This is going to uh, modify uh, Chromebook's RW legacy slot. Um, that's the, the, the step that we want to take here. So we'll press one and enter. And then it's going to go through a process. Um, and then it's going to ask us to type in um, the sentence here. Uh, this is a kind of a thing for them. Uh, so you can't accidentally or, or you can't ever say, well, I didn't know what I was doing. Um, this makes you type out an entire sentence uh, that reiterates, if I do this and it breaks, it's my fault. So now we can actually just go ahead, like it says here, and uh, shut off. So we'll go ahead and close this. We'll say leave. Oops. Put in here. Power down. So we'll go ahead and power back up by pressing the power button. So here we're going to press Control D again to go back into our, our um, back into our operating system here. And this time, what we're going to do is we're going to press Control Alt F2, um, which is going to be here, and possibly the forward button. We will be brought into uh, a login screen. Uh, what we're going to type in here is Chronos, and we'll hit Enter. Um, and basically that's going to be the, the root, basically. And here we're going to uh, type in another command. Again, all of this will be in the description down below. And what this is going to allow us to do is actually boot from a USB device. Uh, that's the whole point of us doing this. Dev, uh, boot legacy equals one. And we'll say enter. Cool, so now we're good there. And we'll say uh, sudo power off. And then that will shut down our Chromebook. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do is grab that USB stick that we installed Gallium on earlier. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and plug that into the USB port, and then we'll go ahead and just power on the Chromebook. As soon as this comes up, this first screen, we're going to press Control L, and that's going to give us our boot options. We'll press Escape, and then we're going to use the option to um, boot from the USB stick, which is option two here. Then we're brought to a screen where we can either use the console or we can just go to the live image and installer. Uh, I like to use the installer here, so we're going to go ahead and do that. And you can actually see how quickly that booted up, which I'm really, really stoked with. Uh, the nice thing about Gallium OS is it's built for this hardware or for Chromebook style hardware, which means that it is uh, less intensive and it boots faster and runs more efficiently on the lower end hardware like this. 
So here we are on our desktop. Um, you'll notice that it looks very, very similar to Windows. Uh, it's got the taskbar like you're familiar with. You know, it's got all of your, your volume and your connectivity and all of that in the bottom right. Uh, in the bottom left, it's got the start menu just like you might see in Windows. Uh, they may hate me for saying that, but it has a very Windows-like feel to it. So we're gonna go ahead and, and go ahead and install this. Uh, very, very simple. We'll just click it or double click it in this case, I guess. Um, in just a, a couple of seconds, the installer will come up. It's gonna ask us what language we want. Of course, we're gonna choose English or rather I'm going to choose English. You can choose any language you'd like. And here it's asking to connect to Wi-Fi so that it can do updates and that sort of thing. Uh, so we'll go ahead and connect to the Wi-Fi uh, here at my house. Uh, we'll put in all of the, the credentials for that. And then once we've got that in, we'll go ahead and click connect. So once it's connected to the Wi-Fi, then we can go ahead and click continue. And that'll start taking us through the installation process here. So we wanna go ahead and download all of the updates and install all of the third-party media stuff. Uh, you don't have to do that, um, but it is kind of nice to just do that uh, from the beginning and not have to worry about trying to get all this stuff later on. So we'll go ahead and select that and click continue. So here it's asking, what do we want to do? Do we want to uh, delete everything that's here? Do we want to use any of the, the predetermined uh, logical volume management stuff? Or do we want to do something custom here? Uh, I'm just going to use the, the basic installer here. We're not going to change anything. So we'll use the first option and then uh, go ahead and click continue. Here it's saying, yeah, are, are, are these the things that you want to do? We're going to say, yes, that is, that's fine. Here's asking what time zone. I'm I'm in mountain, so Denver is just fine for me. Uh, so go ahead and click next. On this screen, it asks what keyboard do I want to use? Uh, U.S. English or English U.S. is fine. Um, and then it's going to ask for your your name, what computer name you want, um, your username, and of course a password. Um, I use some pretty generic stuff on, on this when I'm doing these videos. Uh, I would suggest using uh, a strong password and not having it automatically log in like I'm going to do here. Um, but again, this is just for demonstration purposes. In a real world, you do want to be more secure than this. So now basically we're just going to uh, kind of go through this installation process, you know, and it's going to rotate through some screens here. Like this one talks about what is Gallium OS, uh, which is really cool because it's, it's built on Ubuntu, but uh, it's specifically developed for uh, a Chromebook style hardware. So uh, it's very, very easy to use and uh, very, uh, very resource uh, not intensive uh, and runs very quickly on, uh, on this hardware. Okay, so that's it. That, that, that's how quickly and easily this installs. This process took less than 10 minutes. Uh, here we're given the option to either continue testing or restart. We wanna jump into this. So we'll go ahead and say restart now, um, and then we'll go ahead and boot into the desktop and uh, actually get going with the operating system. And here it's gonna tell us to go ahead and remove the installation media. That would be that USB stick and then press enter. So we'll go ahead and do that. It'll go through a reboot process, and of course, I like to press Control L here, um, and then Escape, and uh, Option One this time because there's no USB stick to, to boot off of. And uh, then we're booting right back into the the, the actual operating system uh, that we'll use moving forward. Now, of course, the, the first thing that I like to do here is always try to install updates. Uh, so we can go down to the bottom left, uh, click the what we'll call the, the start button, uh, for lack of a better term there. And, um, and then we'll go to the Gallium OS updater. And just like it was reading my mind, up there at the top right, you'll see that uh, there are 424 packages or 464 packages, 252 of those are security updates. So go ahead and do that. Uh, we'll go ahead and um, like I said, just a moment ago, we'll go ahead and click this Gallium OS update. Uh, then we're going to put in our password. Um, when you're typing in your password, nothing is going to show up on the screen. That's for security reasons. Um, if you're typing stuff in and nothing shows up, it's fine. It's supposed to do that. 
So here's a list of everything that's going to update um, and the 171 megs of additional disk space that will be needed. Uh, we'll go ahead and say yes, that's fine. We want to do these updates. And then at this point, it will uh, just run through this process. This will take a few minutes, um, but again, not too bad grand scheme of things here. So one of the cool things about this, and I know this is fairly popular in, in some operating systems, is that uh, down here at the bottom right, you can see that there are a couple of rectangles uh, where the, the, the first one is highlighted right now. Uh, that's showing that we're on workspace number one, but if we wanted to, we could click workspace number two. Uh, so maybe we're doing some coding in one screen and some design in another screen, or we're doing maybe coding in that first screen, but we're doing research in the other screen. And we don't want to have to bounce back and forth between all these different windows. Um, we can just toggle between workspaces here. Um, of course, when you toggle between them, all of the system resources are going to be uh, still used in the background. Um, but it's nice to be able to, to differentiate those um, to be two different or, or possibly even more different workspaces to, to utilize. And uh, here I'm looking for uh, basically the task viewer, uh, but for some reason can't remember the, the name task viewer. So we'll click accessories here. And w whenever you click the, the thing in the right, uh, any of the, the sub menus will pop up in the left over there, uh, which is a little bit different than Windows, but still very, very easy to use. And there's task manager. Here we can see that um, it's, it's only using like 30 to maybe 60% of the CPU here, um, which again, for what it's doing is really, really low. Um, and then also it's only using about 20% of the memory, uh, which is really cool because this has only got two gigabytes of memory in it. So that means it's only using about 400 megs of memory. Uh, here we can sort by what's using the most and you can see that everything's only using like 50, uh, 50, 55 megs or something less or less than that uh, for all of its different processes. So it's being very, very efficient in what it's doing here. So I'm really, really happy about uh, the way they've built this operating system. So here we'll go ahead and pop back over to um, our first workstation or first workspace so we can see what the, the status of the updates here. It's still got a few minutes left, so we'll go ahead and let this run for a bit longer um, and then we should be good to go. Okay, so here it's asking us, what do we want to do with the grub, uh, which has to do with the booting? Um, but you've got a couple of options. You can either use the, the current version that's on here, or you can use the, the package maintainer's version. Um, I've always used the package maintainer version uh, whenever I've done this, and it's been just fine. Uh, I, would, I would advise to do the same. And here we are, we're done. That's just that easy. It said press enter to close the window. And there you have it. That's how easy it is to install Gallium OS on a Chrome OS device. So by default, everything should work just fine. Uh, you know, your trackpad, your, your, your keyboard, everything should work. But you may run into an issue with your media keys, like your volume up and down, and possibly even your brightness, though I didn't experience uh, the brightness so much as I did experience the volume up and down and the mute button's not working. And I'm going to uh, release a separate video for that. Uh, this video has gotten really, really long. Also, I think that more than just Gallium OS, people will experience this. I had somebody reach out to me recently and, and, and tell me that he had that problem installing on Ubuntu. I also noticed it here. Um, so I will also link to that in the description below. And again, if I remember, I'll put a card up here for that. Hopefully you uh, found this video helpful and informative. If you did, do me a favor, give it a thumbs up. Also be sure to leave a comment down below letting me know that it worked or if it didn't work, you know, what kind of issues you've run into, that sort of thing. Uh, I like talking to you guys and helping where I can uh, with these tech related things. Also, if you ever want to help support the channel, I do have a list of, of ways that you can help support the channel in the description down below. Uh, I just signed up for a new service. I believe it's called Coffee, uh, where you can uh, buy me a coffee. It's very, very similar to uh, Patreon. It's an online tip jar. And uh, if you want to contribute and help out the channel, you can definitely check that out as well. But I think I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up here. Um, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support and I'll talk to you in the next video.